The decision to introduce a second world championship was reportedly a Triple H call and not due to Vince McMahon. Nick Khan sends an email out to the WWE employees suggesting they're all going to be returning to the office soon. Braun Strowman is currently out of action with a concussion. An update on the Dyad after they requested their release from WWE. Pretty Deadly seemingly have been written off NXT television, paving the way for them to get caught up to the main roster in the upcoming 2023 WWE draft. Andre Chase seemingly confirms his NXT exit ahead of the draft too. An update on Logan Paul's status with WWE. You've got the ratings for this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. Stone Cold Steve Austin gives an update on his in-ring future. And the NXT Championship match for the NXT Battleground at Premium Live Event seemingly has been confirmed. Indy Hartwell retains the NXT's Women's Championship despite suffering an injury. An NXT North American Championship match is set for next week. And Obafemi makes his NXT debut. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. Let's start off talking about the brand new WWE World Heavyweight Championship introduced by Triple H on Monday Night Raw. And not just introduced on television, but also introduced in terms of the creative by the chief content officer of the company. Wrestling fans have begun adopting a new go-to line every time they come across something in WWE that they either don't like, don't want, or don't understand. Well, clearly, that's a Vince McMahon decision. Such was the case for some on Monday when the news that the WWE World Heavyweight Championship was being resurrected. But according to Sports Illustrated, those fans don't have a leg to stand on here as Vince McMahon was not involved in the decision to add a new world title into the mix. The announcement of the new title, which will have its inaugural champion crowned at Night of Champions in Saudi Arabia on May 27, was a decision made by WWE Chief Content Officer Paul Triple H Levesque. He's keen on the idea of each brand having its own champion and with Reigns firmly established as the undisputed WWE Universal Champion and likely staying on SmackDown with those unified bouts through the draft, that opened the door for Monday Night Raw to get its own title, a setup that Triple H prefers. Levesque, of course, has overseen the creative direction of WWE since Vince McMahon retired from the company in 2022. But of course, since then, Vince has unretired. He's returned to the boardroom in January. So too did his opinions on the company's creative direction, which has been responsible for several instances of changes being made. For instance, this past Monday night on Raw, there were several sweeping changes made by McMahon prior to the show, despite the fact that he was working remotely. Such a dynamic has led many to assume that one of Vince McMahon's calls was the new championship in question. Of course, Triple H's history with the World Heavyweight Championship is very long and storied. He was the inaugural champion of the first World Heavyweight Champion back on Raw in 2002. He was just gifted the championship by Eric Bischoff. The new World Heavyweight Championship bout harkens back to the big gold bout of WWE's original World Heavyweight Championship design, but with a large WWE logo stamped in the middle of the main plate as well as on both sides. So reportedly, it was a Triple H call. Now, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about WWE office stuff. Now, an important email that WWE CEO Nick Khan sent out to all employees of the company on April 25th, that being yesterday, has been revealed. Per the email, all employees will return to working in office full-time on May 1st instead of the flexible system where they could also work from home. Khan wrote via PW Insider, quote, we are all fortunate to be three years, one month and 14 days removed from the moment where stay at home orders were put in place, businesses shuttered some permanently and sports seasons cancelled. Of course, at WWE, and thanks to all of you, we continue to move forward, never missing a week of production in the safest way possible. As I have the good fortune of meeting with so many of you over the last few months, it has become apparent to me that our business thrives on creativity and an unparalleled work ethic. All of us physically together is a part of that. As such, we'll be going back to what has always been the case prior to COVID, which is a return to five days a week in the office. Nothing replaces our ability to interact with one another as we collectively continue to build and represent our company. We will all connect better and be better. Monday, May 1st, 2023 will be the start of our full-time return to office. For those based in Stanford, our first group has moved to our new HQ and the rest of us will be there shortly. We thank you for your patience with this process. If you have not seen it yet, it is a spectacular workspace that we will believe you will all be quite proud of. Thank you for all, Nick. So if you're a WWE employee, you're going back to the office whether you like it or not. 
Now, Braun Strowman is actually out of action. He wrestled on SmackDown on Friday, but he's actually suffered a concussion. He's going to be out for action for an undisclosed period of time. Former WWE Universal Champion Braun Strowman was in action, as I mentioned, on last week's episode of Friday Night SmackDown on Fox, where he teamed with Ricochet to defeat the Viking Raiders. Braun has not wrestled a match since then, with him not appearing at the WWE Live events this weekend, and we now know why that is the case. Per PW Insider Elite, Strowman is currently out of action after suffering a concussion concussion. He was scheduled for this past weekend's WWE live events where he would team with Ricochet against the Viking Raiders, but he was pulled from the road in order to heal. There's been no word on how long Strowman will be out of action for, as is often the case with concussions. Strowman actually took to Twitter yesterday to thank fans for reaching out to him after the news of his injury was released. He said, quote, thank you to everyone that has reached out. I'm doing much better. Hate missing work. Sorry to everyone over the weekend that was looking forward to seeing me performing. We are taking every proper step to make sure I recover to 100%. Hashtag nothing can stop the monster. Much love, of course. We wish Strowman the best in his recovery from his injury and hopefully he can be back in action very soon. An update on the Dyad. Now, we've spoken about this quite a few times over the last few days. It's a bit of an ongoing saga, pretty much ever since NXT Stand and Deliver earlier this month. But here's the latest update on the status of the Dyad after last night's NXT Spring Breaking following news of their release request being denied by the company. Both Rip Fowler and Jaggery tweeted on April 24 that they'd requested to be released by WWE on April 3rd, but they were told that that request would not be granted. They said they'll become free agents in mid-October of this year. After going public with that, here's what went down with them at last night's NXT tapings. Firstly, they were at the show. They actually wrestled and won a match taped for Friday's episode of Level Up against the team of Hank Walker and Tank Ledger. They didn't appear on the main NXT television show though despite the leader of the faction schism joe gacy and fellow schism member ava appearing in a backstage segment with gallus's joe coffee during that segment a match between gacy and coffee was made for next week with the stipulation that if gacy can win the dyad would get a two-on-two title match against nxt tag team champions mark coffee and wolfgang the other members of gallus however if joe coffee wins the dyad will never get another title match for as long as gallus are the tag team champions so the latest update on the dyad is despite publicly announcing their release requests were denied and that they'd be free agents in a few months they weren't immediately completely erased from NXT or anything like that obviously We'll have to wait and see until next week to see if they'll be having a tag team title match anytime soon or if they'll end up potentially never having a tag team title match again. So that's kind of the latest there, but certainly it is quite a confusing and peculiar situation, isn't it? Now, keeping with NXT, it looks like Pretty Deadly are headed for a main roster call-up. There was a first-time ever match at last night's NXT Spring Breaking between two big tag teams and seemingly one tag team being written off at the end. Pretty Deadly, that being Elton Prince and Kip Wilson, took on Stax Lorenzo and Tony D'Angelo in the first ever trunk match in which the winner will be determined when one tag team is shoved in the trunk of a classic car coast close to ringside. However, notably, both members of the team need to be put in the trunk and have the lid closed. When Pretty Deadly was able to get Stax Lorenzo inside the trunk, unfortunately, things went quickly awry when they went to go back to open it. Instead, Stax struck using a giant fire extinguisher to blast Pretty Deadly. With a crowbar to Kit Wilson, he fell in the trunk and then out and Prince fell victim after being driven through a table. At the end of the match, the family drove off with Pretty Deadly still in the trunk, which could be seen as a way to write them off NXT television. By the end of the episode, they appeared to be written out of the uh, of NXT completely, with Tony D'Angelo and Stax Lorenzo noting that they were, quote, sleeping with the fishes. Now, for reference, the last time the family made a man sleep with the fishes, he popped up in AEW not long after that. Although it's just more likely that Pretty Deadly are sticking to WWE rather than going over to AEW, it looks like they're just going to be called up to the main roster. Pretty Deadly have been rumored to be pitched for a call-up to Monday Night Raw during the forthcoming WWE draft that begins on Friday. So this seemingly was a way to write them off television and have them participate in the main roster call-ups. Now, speaking of main roster call-ups, we might have another one in being Andre Che. On last night's NXT Spring Breaking, there were several teases of potential call-ups with another unfolding further on social media. After losing to Bron Breaker, Andre Chase took to Twitter to share a message with fans. Andre Chase wrote, quote, It's been a hell of a ride, hashtag WWE NXT. This is a teachable moment. New beginnings are often disguised as painful endings, hashtag NXT Spring Breaking. 
Now, there's no confirmation that Chase was referring to a call-up, but of course, given the timing and given the way he was beaten by Bron Breaker, that's how a lot of people have taken his message. Elsewhere on the card, there was a lot of other things going on when it comes to the Women's Championship. We'll get into that in just a second with some people thinking that Roxanne Perez or Tiffany Stratton, they could get called up. So lots of people were taking the results of last night's uh, spring-breaking episode as, oh, they're going to be going to the main roster. We'll have to wait and see until Friday and certainly Monday for answers when it comes to all of that. An update on Logan Paul in WWE. Logan Paul has provided an update on his WWE status at WrestleMania 39. Seth Freakin' Rollins defeated Logan Paul. Prior to the event, there were questions regarding the contract status for Paul. Just a couple of weeks following the show, the social media star revealed that he did, in fact, re-sign a new multi-year deal with WWE. On the latest episode of his Impulsive podcast, Paul welcomed on WWE Hall of Famer Edge and discussed some of the criticisms directed at part-time performers, confirming that his new contract contract will keep him on a part-time schedule going forward and admitting that he feels some guilt over it Paul stated quote I just kind of not bad but man you have the weeklies who are really like actively building this organization every single week and I get to come in and capitalize on the goodwill that they've sacrificed their body for again four times a year Paul continued to reiterate that despite his sporadic appearances, he will continue to do his best as a performer for the company, saying, quote, by the way, I'm not going to stop. But for the wrestlers listening to this, I am cognizant of it, and I appreciate your hard work that I get to benefit off four times a year. Now, speaking of that impulsive episode, as I mentioned, Edge was on it. Now, the Rated R Superstar, he's come back from this career-ending injury when it came to his neck injury. They actually suffered way back in 2000, and when was it? 2003, I think it was, 2002. Nevertheless, it ended his career back in 2011 but he came back in 2020 but he's often spoken about retiring possibly this year possibly in Toronto in the summer now he spoke about knowing that his career is coming to an end or very close to coming to an end and obviously he's at the age of 49 he said quote I don't want to stick around to the point where it's like oh there he is okay I don't want it to get there when I come out now I feel the explosion I feel all of that to throw at them that's still there I don't know if that for me will ever go away I feel like in this last run the Rocky Balboa movie which I watched two nights before my comeback I was in tears Stallone's monologues in it were all the things that were going through my mind. I realized I got to get out of this basement because I didn't have the chance to end it the way I wanted to. This time, I'm going to get to do that now. Now, I have two little girls that I have to spend the rest of my life taking care of. I have a wish list of things that are still to do, but it's not long and neither is the time. At most, I might have another year left in me to be able to do this at a level, to still be able to do it at an elite level where I can hang, where I get in with Austin Theory, who was 25 and wasn't born when I had my first match in WWE. When Logan's co-host Mike mentioned that Edge didn't want to go out like Mickey Rourke and the wrestler, the Hall of Famer replied, no, I want to still be sitting on my mountain and watching you guys go and do your thing and going good for them. So Edge says he has another year left at the elite level, which people are saying, oh, I think it's just a turn of phrase, to be honest with you. But hey, you never know. Now, let's talk about the ratings for this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. The viewership figure and demo rating for Monday's episode of Raw on USA Network has been revealed per Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics. Raw drew 1.815 million viewers. This is the same as the April 17 edition that drew 1.815 million viewers. In the 18 to 49 demographic, Monday's show scored a 0.56 rating. This is down from the week prior that scored a 0.58 rating. WWE ranked number four on cable in the demo for the night. The show, of course, featured Bad Bunny's return to confront Damian Priest and challenge him for a San Juan street fight at Backlash. Of course, Triple H also introduced the brand new World Heavyweight Championship with the new champion being crowned at the upcoming Night of Champions event on May 27. Now, let's talk about Stone Cold Steve Austin. So many rumors were going around about Steve Austin possibly wrestling at WrestleMania 39. Of course, this came after Steve Austin returned to the ring after nearly 20 years at WrestleMania 38. He came out of retirement to defeat Kevin Owens in a match that was originally billed just as a confrontation. Ahead of WrestleMania 39, Austin stated that he had been in contact with WWE about a match at the event. Speaking to WESH2, Austin once again reiterated that WWE approached him for another match at the show of shows. When asked about potentially doing another match he said quote they approached me about wrestling at wrestlemania 39 i thought what i did with kevin that was a great send-off because i started in dallas got a chance to end in dallas the way we framed that match too much wasn't expected i got approached to be part of 39 
But the schedule of filming, I told WWE, I don't know what my life looks like until we get into production and knowing if I can train for WrestleMania 39. We finished this show about five to seven days before WrestleMania. There is no way traveling all over God's creation in an RV with a 35 pound dumbbell, a 45 pound sandbag, some kettlebells that I could have gotten in that kind of shape. In the future, I'm not saying I will get back in the ring, but like I said at 38, if the stars align, anything could happen. Now, Stone Cold Steve Austin has been filming for his reality show, Stone Cold Takes on America, which airs Sunday, April 30th on A&E at 10 p.m. Eastern. So basically, Austin's saying, look, I could have done it, but the schedule wasn't there. So who knows? Maybe next year, WrestleMania 40. Now, the NXT Championship match seemingly has been set for NXT Battleground, and this could be the main event, of course, that's going up against head-to-head -head AW Double or Nothing on pay-per-view, with NXT Battleground primed for a battle against Double or Nothing for the attention of wrestling fans on Memorial Day weekend. The main event of the big event might have just been revealed. After Carmelo Hayes successfully defended his NXT Championship against Grayson Waller, it wasn't long until he revealed his next opponent. Taken to the mic, Hayes challenged Breaker, but instead of coming through the standard entrance ramp, the new dastardly Braun struck from behind. First taking out Trick Williams, Breaker wasted no time taking out the champion in spectacular fashion. After an in-ring assault, he then delivered a mighty spear through a wall, completely knocking Carmelo Hayes into the abyss to end the segment. Uh, and seemingly, again, this is going to be setting up a match for NXT Battleground, and it's going to be going head-to-head -head with Double or Nothing. It wasn't the only title match, of course, last night, though. The NXT Women's Championship was on the line, and there was chaos in the match because the actual champion, Indy Hartwell, was injured. When Tiffany Stratton took a big dive off the top rope onto the outside, her landing looked awkward as champion Indy Hartwell appeared to, appeared to take the brunt of the fall, catching Stratton with Hartwell's leg ending up in a bad position. With Hartwell down at ringside, Roxanne Perez and Stratton continued the match while the crowd was largely silent for a period, staring at what was going on with the current NXT Women's Champion. Hartwell was then taken to the back by a member of the medical team as she'd legitimately gotten hurt. However, she wouldn't stay down as she ran back out, albeit slowly, to continue to defend her title by the end of the match. Powering through adversity, Hartwell rejoined the match with a hobble, but valiantly fought on regardless. After battling back, Indy Hartwell was able to pin Roxanne Perez to retain her NXT Women's Championship after pulling Tiffany Stratton out of the ring when Stratton herself tried to pin Perez. Based on the reception and praise for Hartwell from NXT talent on Twitter, including heels JC Jane and Grayson Waller, so it would be out of character for them to praise her, it seems like her injury may have been legitimate. Dijak also tweeted that he was with Hartwell in medical when she was getting it looked at, and she was no-selling the shit out of it and looked like an absolute badass. Evidently, the decision was made that she'd be able to go out for the end of the match, but the injury itself wasn't a planned storyline or anything like that. It appears to be legitimate. So if that is the case, major credit to Indy Hartwell for fighting and powering through. The North American Championship will be on the line on next week's episode of NXT. Wesley will defend against Drew Gulak. Gulak and Charlie Dempsey attacked Lee on the April 18 episode of NXT after Lee had retained the North American Championship against Dempsey. The match between Lee and Gulak was announced during Tuesday's NXT Spring Breaking Special. In a backstage segment on this week's show, former NXT UK champion Tyler Bate proposed a partnership, but Lee declined, but then offered to be in his corner during next week's title match, which Lee accepted. Gulak, who is a SmackDown star, has been on NXT since January. One of his last televised SmackDown matches was on August 26, 2021 where he was defeated by Karrion Cross. Before moving back to NXT, Gulak had a dark match against Shinsuke Nakamura on December 2nd on that episode of SmackDown. So we're going to be getting a North American Championship match next week. Finally, we got a big debut last night on NXT Spring Break, and Obafemi made his debut appearance on NXT television on USA Network, taking on Oreo Mensa in a hard-hitting match. Femi is an impressive recruit from the Next In Line program, with NXT offering a second chance home to college athletes who are wrapping up their collegiate sporting careers and interested in exploring a new avenue. Obafemi stands at a massive six foot four inches and is a former track and field athlete at the University of Alabama. He won his debut match against Mensa. Before his NXT TV debut, Femi had worked several matches on NXT Level Up. So I thought he looked pretty impressive. What did you think of Oba Femi? But there you go, guys. This is the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash the like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.